we're going to continue looking at resistors and this time we're looking at the application of using resistors in a voltage divider circuit um, and a voltage divider itself is a really quite simple setup uh, but there are a few tricks about it that we'll need to be uh, a bit aware of uh, to make sure that we uh, know how they work and um, what the important aspects are. Uh, simply put, a voltage divider converts an input or supply voltage um, so if we take a, a battery or a power pack or something along those lines um, and if it has a, an EMF that's uh, too big uh, we can use a voltage uh, divider circuit uh, to um, produce smaller output voltages. So it's not always going to be the case that the, um, the voltage that you need uh, is going to be the voltage that you're able to supply and so um, we can use a voltage divider circuit in order to produce the, uh, the appropriate potential difference that we need as an output. Um, and it's, as I said, a simple circuit. Uh, it consists of just two resistors, and those resistors are connected in uh, series. And we can use the equations that we've already developed for resistors in series um, in order to figure out the total resistance, the current that flows using Ohm's law. Uh, so I can calculate that output, and we'll do that in an example in a second. But um, the reason that we've, we're using two resistors in series is that a secondary circuit is going to be connected uh, in parallel with one of those resistors. Now the fact that it's been connected in parallel uh, means that we're going to have to look at um, some of the uh, changes that will occur, but we'll get to that later in this video. Um, and we'll just deal with um, the, the basics first uh, of how the output potential difference is produced. And we'll do that in an example. So the example we're going to have a look at, uh, we'll start with the uh, circuit diagram. Uh, so on the left hand side I'm going to draw a battery. Uh, now the orientation of this circuit is not particularly important, I'm just drawing it vertically so I've got a bit of space on the right hand side to write a few more notes. Um, you could draw it horizontally as well. Um, so we have two resistors in series here with the battery on the left hand side. So this is going to be our source, so Vs. I'm going to call this resistor Rx and the second resistor Ro. Uh, so O for output and X for extra. So the values we're going to use for this example, our supply is going to be 9.0 volts. Uh, Rx is going to be 680 ohms and Ro is going to be 270 ohms and our output voltage is going to be the voltage across the 270 ohm resistor so we can draw some connections there to show the um, the output voltage so that would be the output voltage VO across those two terminals. Now the first step is to find the, the total circuit resistance and we can do that using uh, resistors in series so that's just going to be Rx plus Ro uh, substitute those values in of 680 and 270 and we get a total circuit resistance of 950 ohms. Now we can use Ohm's law to figure out uh, what the circuit current is going to be. So Vs is going to be equal to the total resistance. Notice I haven't bothered redrawing the circuit here. Uh, this is a fairly straightforward circuit to analyze. Um, so we can then uh, figure out the current is going to be equal to Vs over R total and that's going to be equal to 9.0 volts over 950 ohms which gives us an answer of 0.0095 amps uh, which we can write as 9.5 milliamps. So notice how small the circuit current is here. Uh, the output voltage then we can use uh, Ohm's law again just looking at the uh, uh, output resistance and the current that flows through it. Uh, so that's going to be 270 multiplied by 0.0095 and that gives us an output voltage of 2.6 volts. So the output voltage VO is 2.6 volts. So the uh, secondary circuit that we would connect to VO would be operating off a voltage of about 2.6 volts. There's an important point to note here about this secondary circuit. There's a whole heap of uh, ways that um, a secondary circuit could be connected or the, the purpose for a secondary circuit. Uh, some fairly simple such as a motor uh, or a lamp, others uh, much more complicated. Um, 
a secondary circuit's going to have its own resistance and so it's going to alter the total circuit resistance and if you follow that calculation above you'll notice that the total circuit resistance uh, determined the current that was flowing and if the current through the output uh, resistor is changed that then means that the output voltage is going to change. So it's going to affect the uh, circuit current and also the output voltage. In order for that to be minimized, the secondary circuit needs to have a very high uh, resistance. And the reason for that is that if it's got a very high resistance, the, uh, the fact that it's in parallel uh, with the output voltage, uh, when you calculate what that uh, equivalent resistance would be, um, you would find then that it's going to be um, not too much smaller than the original resistance um, of um, the output uh, resistor itself um, and so the output voltage won't vary that significantly. Um, and we're going to have a look at that in more detail in class. We'll go through a, a few um, um, scenarios using Yanker uh, to get a better idea of um, exactly how that uh, secondary circuit uh, can change the output voltage. Um, and we'll look at uh, how big or how small it might be. In some cases it'll be a, a situation where you might have a sort of a, a 5% um, uh, tolerance so you might be able to allow that output voltage to drop by 5% um, but in other cases it might need to be uh, uh, much more um, precise. Um, so we'll have a look at a few of those examples as I said. Um, and ultimately the reason why this is going to work is because that output circuit will draw a minimal uh, current and so the current flowing through the output resistor will stay fairly close to what it was um, and that will mean that VO uh, will remain close to uh, the desired value but it'll still be a little bit smaller. Uh, anytime you add a secondary circuit um, you're going to see that there is going to be some drop off in the, uh, the output voltage um, but um, if you can limit it to a small amount then that's, that's the ideal situation. The last point to make is uh, the type of resistors that you might use. Um, so it doesn't just have to be fixed resistors, it could be a uh, thermistor, um, a light dependent resistor or you could even just use a variable resistor. Uh, so that means that we're now going to have uh, an output voltage that can vary. And the reason why that's useful uh, is that um, the output voltage can be varied due to some external input um, so or external stimulus and that could be um, a uh, temperature, uh, it could be due to the light level um, or it could even just be because of the, the setting that you want to choose um, and some of the sorts of examples uh, that we can have a look at there uh, so sort of tying in directly to um, uh, those three types of resistors something like overheating alarms so by changing the, uh, the resistance due to the temperature uh, that can affect when an alarm might go off. Um, in the case of uh, light dependent resistor uh, it could be um, outdoor automatic lights. So when the light level drops below a certain uh, intensity um, the lights will turn on due to the change in the resistance. Um, and the variable resistor, a uh, fairly um, common one there would be a light dimmer switch so where you have um, uh, a switch that you can uh, use to change the intensity of your lighting, uh, that would be a situation where a variable resistor might be used in a, a, a voltage divider circuit. Variable resistors could also be used to set the sensitivity, um, so in terms of the, how hot or cold a, 
the uh, overheating alarm needs to be set for or the, uh, the, the level of the light that needs to be reached in order for the circuit to turn on. As I said, we'll have a look in more detail at some of those uh, circuits in class so we can get a better idea of how uh, these voltage divider circuits work.